persons lived here on earth. Two, they lived here on earth. And then, they were called or known by the same name. Each of them answered Saul, Saul. It looks like somebody who comes to the church. You can be a member of a church without the church through you. Just like somebody can go to the university, graduate without the university passing through the person. That is one of the problems that we have today. There are graduates. They have their degrees. But when they speak, you don't see degree. Somebody can pass through a school without the school passing through the person. Somebody can pass through a church without the church passing through the person. Two persons can sit in the same classroom. But at the same time, they may not come up or come out of that school with the same knowledge. Because one wasted his time and one was serious. Since he lived here on earth, at the end of the day, one said, I have played fool. But the other one said, I have fought the good fight. Choice made a difference between two of them. I am addressing two persons tonight. Two persons. Number one, those who have decided to live eternity careless life. And those who have decided to live eternity driven life. There are people here on earth who are not concerned about eternity. They want to live and do what they want to do. They don't want to live their lives. Get in mind that there is somebody who was there at the beginning of your life who will surely be there also at the end of your life. Before I draw the curtain tonight, I want to show you two persons, two groups. That's my assignment tonight. I will begin with people who live the eternity careless life. What it means to live a eternity careless life. My mind goes back to a very young man. Each time I remember him, I remember what I call shattered destiny. Do you know you can shatter your destiny? I told you last night, you have a wonderful tomorrow. I told you last night, you can make it. I told you last night, you can be the tallest tree of your family. I told you last night, there is a future. I told you last night, you can be great. You were made, the material you were made with is the material for success. But I tell you today also, you can shatter your destiny. If you go to the burial ground, the burial ground is the richest place on earth. Burial ground. Wow. If you go to the burial ground, paragon of beauty, ebony black, those who were beauty personified. The other day when people were looking at the pictures, of victims of the air crash. Some people were looking at the beauty of people who died. I want to tell you today, no matter how beautiful, 
It doesn't matter how pointed your nose is. The ant of the ground must visit it. This is true. You must die. But if you go to the burial ground, you will see unaccomplished visions. You will see unfulfilled dreams. President will never be. Powerful preacher will never be. If you go to the burial ground, you will see millionaire that never be. Leaders that never be. May you not be one of those who will descend to the grave without accomplishing your purpose for people. May you not be one of those. I have a wish and prayer for everybody participating in this program. Hear me. I sit over you. I prophesy over your head by the grace of God. You will come to your grave without any ocean yet unnavigated. Uganda Bori Alaba. Do you know that it is what prompts laughter at the deathbed? Go and ask people, nurses who work at the hospitals, even at homes, when people are about dying, some struggle to death. It takes few giants who smile into death. Ale Makankaba. Struggling to death. God, can you give me one more chance? Ah. I remember things I should have done which I didn't do. I couldn't clear my road. I couldn't clear my road. I couldn't make the road clear. May you not die unprepared to meet your maker. May you not die unprepared to meet your maker. If you die unprepared to meet your maker, your churchianity has become a wasteful venture. Hear me tonight. I'm talking about Gehazi. Now, hear me, this young man. Let's go to Gehazi and Esrae, the potential in him. If you look at the potential in Gehazi, you will connect it with the message that I preached last night. Number one, he was a disciple of a man of God that had double and not double portion. Look at the logic. Elisha served Elijah and he was settled with double portion. Is that correct? Gehaz served Elisha. The traditional expectation is that Gehaz will be settled with quadruple Elijah. Double Elisha, which is quadruple Elisha. Uh, no. Double Elisha is quadruple Elijah. That was what he was earmarked for. Traditionally speaking. A man with such potentials. Oh my God. Somebody is seated here. And you are carrying double. Do you know you are carrying double? Somebody is seated here. Carrying the destiny of other people. But my tears and worry tonight is that this young man who was potentially equipped he lived a eternity careless life may I share with you the consequences of eternity careless life he followed Elisha he didn't allow the ministry of Elisha to follow him. He did not allow the ministry of Elisha How did it start? I don't mind. I don't know how the Lord will lead us today. Naaman 
was healed. Who was their man? A heavy weight in the government. Number two, what pastors will want to call big fish? What pastors will like to call what? Guess what that man, he was healed by the ministry of Elisha. Let, let me talk to fellow preachers. If you are anointed, God will make you a consultant. You can even be in your house and the government will begin to consult you. When a preacher begins to line up at the government house, protocol people will use you to play football. Because you reduce yourself to a loaf of bread. When you have a message, they shall look for you. When you say the truth, they will incidentally look for you. But when you see a blood sucker and you begin to praise him, you see a 419er, you give him a special seat. When you leave the pulpit and begin to sound like a politi politician, when you become a hired prayer warrior, oh my God, they can hire your prayability. When your prayability goes in for commercial purposes, I'm afraid you're missing the main purpose of the Almighty God. Gehazi watched this big fish healed. And you know what happened? Naaman brought, the Bible says, a caravan of gifts. If I may use a present day terminology, he brought containers, lorry loads of gifts. And I wouldn't like to say he gave it to the man of God. I would like to use our current day terminology. He, so, he decided to sow it into the ministry of who? He sowed it into the ministry of Elijah. Is that correct? He sowed it. But to his greater chagrin, the man of God says, Thank you for the offer. But as the Lord lives, I won't accept any. Bundai Before you accept a gift, sometimes ask your maker. May we become sensitive. And let me tell this my generation. God cannot change his mind because of money. Hear me today. Wherever you are, hear the sound of my voice tonight. Money will not make God say that a sinner is no more a sinner. It will not make God say that a criminal is no more a criminal. And I stand to proclaim to everybody, let the church hear this. Let Pentecostals hear it. Nobody can buy the gift of God with money. You cannot buy the gift of God with millions. God is too big for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be purchased with money. The man of God rejected 
a well packaged gift from a, 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 a top a governmental top notch of the day. I wouldn't have said how you go with your gifts. Wow. Gehazi could not understand it. He couldn't understand it. You know, he looked at it and looked at it. He started swallowing saliva. Wow. Mm. Caved. You know what? As I looked at what the Bible says, when uh, in in Second Kings chapter five, you can read this at home or at your own time, or you can see it Second Kings chapter five, verse sixteen. He he did something. Look at what he said in verse 19. Go in peace, Elisha said, after Naaman had traveled some distance. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, said it himself. He said to who? You know what? It's not about what was preached and what was what is important is what did you say? To, what do you say to yourself at the end of the preaching? You can say to yourself, "I will repent." You can also say to yourself, "I refuse to repent." You can say to yourself, "I will make it." You can also say to yourself, "I won't make it." He said to himself, "My master was too easy on Neymar." I don't understand that language. I want to ask somebody a question. That somebody received God's miracle. Is that why we should milk the person? That's one question. Is that why? He said he. My master was too what? Easy. Oh! By not accepting from him what he brought. You know what he said? As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. I will run after him and do what? I'm going to get something from him. I want to note to us today, Gehazi sat under the ministry of Elisha, but the ministry of Elisha did not pass through him. Instead of believing the word of God, he still allowed his own selfish philosophy to engulf him. And look at what he did. Nobody knew that a Gehazi joined a popular club that exists in every place. Fast Guys Club. He joined the Fast Guys Club. They are everywhere. Among the pastors, there are fast guys. Among church workers, there are fast guys. Everywhere, even in the offices, there are fast guys.